Hello, welcome to this mala making video. My name is Samya Matma. I'm a yoga teacher and mala maker based in Tipperary in Ireland. And I've been making malas for about 20 years, almost every day. Today's video is an attempt to teach more people mala making and also to remind old students who've forgotten how to make the malas to, to get back into it. So it's aimed at the complete beginner, but once you've got the hang of it, you can make this practice into a sadhana. In the beginning you'll be using all your concentration just to make the knots. Once you've got the hang of the knots, start to add the mantra. Whether you're chanting Om, whether you're chanting Mahamrityunjaya Mantra or Gayatri Mantra, or your own personal uh, mantra from, from a guru, is up to you. But your mind should be focused on mantra while you're chanting, while you're tying knots. The other thing is later on you may also be mala making with the breath. So as you breathe out you tie a knot and chant a mantra. As you breathe in you tie a knot, chant a mantra. And this takes some time usually but that is where it can go. So this Brahma Granti knot, the traditional mala making knot, is a very beautiful way of making a mala. It's a very fluid way of making a mala. It doesn't require any tools. It's just using your fingers and either cotton or silk thread. So we're going to start with how to measure the thread, how to thread the beads, how to tie the knots, and eventually how to make a very beautiful decorative tassel. So mala making is a great passion of mine, and I hope this video will help to uh, get you started on the journey. Thanks for watching. Hari Om. Most embroidery thread comes in 8 meter long lengths so you would simply fold it in half but if you have long spools of thread you measure out four meters fold it in half or I should say double it so that you now have eight meters folded in half that is a working length of four meters and that's more than enough for most malas so then you make a slip knot and it's very important it's a slip knot so the two loose ends are tied into a slip knot Then you find the midpoint of the thread, four meters long. And then you need to attach a needle. You could either attach a beading needle with a piece of sewing thread connecting the embroidery thread and the needle. Or you could use an electrical wire. Cut the electrical wire to about two inches and inside you've got plenty of little copper needles that can be twisted and are perfect for threading beads. The first bead that's put on the mala is the sumeru. It's the summit bead, sometimes known as the guru bead, and it's the one that's offset from the rest of the mala beads. Later on you'll need to thread through it again. So in this case we're using two threads, two, two embroidery threads, 
when you thread through again there will be four threads going through that beat so it might be worth checking that before you continue make sure it goes through twice so that's the slow way of threading beads using a copper wire or an, a beading needle another way to thread them is to simply pull them across if you've got beads on thread already tie a loop of sewing thread onto your embroidery thread and this is one of the reasons it's useful to fold your 8 meters in half so that you've got this little loop you can attach things to easily the loop in the embroidery thread so once you've tied that loop in the sewing thread the knot in the middle and then with just a single knot attach the mala beads to your sewing thread and the single knot keeps the knot size small so that you can pull over the beads fairly easily you want a smooth knot and then the knot in the sewing thread is in the middle if it's close to the embroidery thread it makes it a bit thicker so it's more likely to break the sewing thread or undo the knot connecting the mala and the sewing thread so with a bit of care holding the knot and gently pulling over a few beads at a time if you're confident you can pull over more but sometimes they the sewing thread breaks or the knot undoes and the beads go everywhere but with a bit of practice with the right mala you can simply pull them across so at the moment just keep them close to the needle side of the mala needle side of the embroidery thread you're going to want to keep that loop of thread there so carefully detach it from the loose beads if you want you can tie a slip knot there just so that your um, beads don't fall off the end but you'll be starting the knots on the other side the side with the two cut ends So go to the other side, go to the other side, make sure that you've got the slip knot still. And this is where you'll start knotting with the Sumeru bead first. The Brahma Granti knot is basically a slip knot which you lock by pushing the bead through the loop that you make. So there's a way of tightening the knot next to the bead you then push the bead through and then pull the knot tight and you'll see plenty more of these images soon sometimes you need to then pull the individual threads just to really tighten the knot and once you're happy with it you pull the next bead down you make another slip knot So this is still a slip knot at this stage. You make the slip knot. You use a special technique to tighten the knot which involves opening the loop until it's tight and then feeding the mala through. And you'll see that technique more in a moment so don't worry you feed the bead down you make a slip knot remember you can watch this in slow motion you make a slip knot you pull the loose beads you open the loop with your ring finger and once the knot is tight you push the mala through the knotted part of the mala through the loop you 
you slide a bead down, you tie the slip knot, and then you push the mala through. If there's any problem, this one is a bit twisted, you reverse the process. You feed the mala back through the loop, and then you pull the slip knot until it's untied. If the threads are twisted, then just make sure they're not twisted anymore and try again. So you pull the knot down to the bead, you feed the mala through the loop, and then you pull tight. I've made another video which is about six minutes and during that video all that happens is not tying. So once you've seen this and you know the process you could be making the mala alongside that six minute video where you would be constantly reminded of the process and you could watch that on slow motion. In this video I'm trying to go over all the different stages as well. So far we've been using the fingernails to prevent the knot from sliding away from the bead as we pull the knot tight. So you would ordinarily tighten the knot, hold with your fingernails, otherwise the knot would slip away from the bead. But another method, you use the next bead to hold and prevent the Brahma Granti from sliding away. So if your beads are smooth and regular size holes, it's quicker and easier and it's a smoother process to use the next bead and as you push the mala through the loop you then take hold of the next bead and then that keeps the knot secure. Once you've got the hang of the knots, which some people get quickly and others take longer, you'll then add the mantra. If you're not sure what to chant, you could chant Om. This is later on, I've had a break, I've finished the mala, coming to the end of the mala. And there's 109 beads altogether on the mala. There's 108 which are used for mantra repetition. And there's a 109th bead which is the Sumeru, the summit bead, which is not used for chanting. When you reach this bead you rotate the mala round and you go the opposite way round. You go from 1 to 108 and then you go from bead number 108 back to 1 from 1 to 108, from 108 back to 1. You rotate the mala each time, you don't pass the Sumeru. So having counted there's 109 beads, you can gently stretch the mala. Now at this point, this is when beginners malas are often lengthened quite dramatically and the knots are tightened and the beads uh, separate quite far. But it's an important stage because otherwise the person using the mala, even if it's you, your whole mala is going to uh, pull apart. So with practice you'll be able to make these knots tightly so that when you pull them the beads remain close together. Now to finish off the mala you loosen the slip knot, you move the sumeru bead away taking care that it doesn't fall off the end, you tie a double knot linking the mala together and that takes the pressure off the thread where it enters the sumeru bead. Some people avoid tying this knot and then the, the thread gets cut on the sumeru, the pressure against the sumeru. You can either just put a wire on the 
thread again, either on the cotton thread, the sewing thread, or just on the embroidery thread if your sumer is big enough. But if you still have the cotton thread tied on from before, from when you started the mala, a very quick way is to twist the embroidery thread around the sewing thread and while the tension is there from the twist to quickly slide the sumer bead over. And then you have three knots there. You have one on either side of the mala beads. You've got a knot connecting the two ends Sumeru bead goes down to that and then you tie a single knot on the far end of the Sumeru bead. Then you can rest the mala, let it hang on either side of your leg and it'll stay in one place. And now for making the tassel you'll need more embroidery thread or you can even use the off cut that you just cut off. I tend to make it with 30 twists depending on the size of the mala and because I'm doing a variegated tassel with two colors that will be 15 twists. If I had three colors it would be 10 twists. Cut the ends so that they both stick out further than the loop so that when the loop is cut all the ends will be at least the same length. Then attach the tassel with a single knot first in the middle of the loop with the two ends sticking out away. Sorry about the, the focus. Look on each side, make sure that the knot is in the middle. Make it snug and tight and then tie a second knot and that will secure the tassel. Once you're happy with it Use scissors to find the midway point by lifting it up and then snip the tassel in half. Then you can roughly cut it uh, to a similar length. And then using a very simple toothbrush with a flat head with flat bristles start to separate the threads. Each of the embroidery threads has six threads within it which are twisted into a single thread. So when you brush the threads you separate them you make it finer and you help to blend different colors and it also helps to hold the threads in, in one solid shape tassel so that makes it quite a lot easier to tie the band around it in a moment. So take care not to brush it too much. You, you will get thread in the toothbrush and you should hold close to the knot with your finger and thumb to make sure you don't pull through bits of the tassel. If you do that, you might end up having to retie the knot. Then you'll need about 30 centimeters of thread. You, you'll need less than that, but have, have a bit extra when you're starting off. And then just a single thread through the embroidery needle, the blunt nosed embroidery needle. It's very difficult to do with a sharp needle, so wait until you've got the embroidery needle for this. Grip hold of a little bit of the thread with your thumb and then start rotating the thread around, the band around, until you've locked it off, which it may take a few more rotations than it takes me. Once you're you know it's locked off, you can start rotating the tassel towards you and at the same time moving the band away from the mala, keeping the 
thread touching the previous thread as you rotate away from the mala beads. When you've almost made it the thickness that you want, trim off the excess thread and then go around a few more times to cover up that little bit of thread. The needle fell off there so I just re-thread it and when you're pushing the needle through the band you're keeping it as close to the white band as you can. You're not going into the tassel where you may get caught up in some of the red tassel threads. So ideally you're coming through just on the other side of the white band. You gently pull it until the thread is tight and parallel. You might need to push it with your fingernail, make sure it's all equidistant from the mala. You can squeeze the tassel against uh, the mala just to puff out the little bit near the sumeru bead and then you rotate along about a fifth of the mala, let's say a fifth of the band and feed it back through, this time coming out in the middle of the tassel so that when you turn the tassel upside down you're roughly in the middle, you're away from the edges of the band so that when you trim the thread it won't be visible. So that's the band complete. If you'd like to make it look nicer and also be slightly more secure, you can then use a metallic thread around it. So again, take about 30 centimeters of thread, 12 inches, tie a double knot around the needle, and then tie a single knot at the very end of your thread. Any excess may be visible at the bottom of the tassel. So you're, you're within a centimeter of the end of the thread with the knot. You can always trim it if need be afterwards. And then you're going to insert the needle through the middle of the band, the middle of the tassel, going towards the mala and you're going to come out just on the other side of the white band so that again you're not going to accidentally pull any of the threads. Now you may need to insert this in a few different places to find an easy way through without too much resistance. Again the, the round nose needle is really important. And once you've tugged it tightly, just enough to get stuck in the, in the band, start rotating around Start with it touching the white band and move away from the band towards the, the mala. Once you've got it to the thickness you like, feed it through, keeping the needle close to the band. Come through without snagging any of the red threads. Gently pull it tight and then start rotating in the same direction keeping each thread touching the next one and just very gradually moving away from the band. Once you've found that they're the same thickness, feed the needle back through, keeping it close to the band. Gently pull it. And then, as with the white band before, feed it through and this time come out the middle of the tassel. So you move across slightly, maybe a fifth of the circumference. You feed it through and you come out in the middle of the tassel underneath. And then you can clip that thread fairly close to the band. Doesn't have to be too close because it'll be hidden. And 
And then to finish, lightly brush the tassel again, make sure that all the ends are at full length. And that again helps to hold the mala tassel in shape. And once you've got it in shape, just gauge how long you want it to be. And then with your index finger and thumb, hold it to length. And then start to cut while um, slowly pulling the scissors away it tends to help. And then keep rotating the tassel around until you're happy with the finish. And these spring-loaded scissors are really useful for this, but you could use any scissors that you have. So once you've finished cutting, don't use the toothbrush in it, on it anymore. You can flick it back and forth with your fingers. And once you finish, have a good look at the mala. Make sure there's no kinks in it. If you need to, gently stretch the beads again. And that's it. Hi Leon. Thank you for watching the video. I hope uh, you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Remember you can always go back. I'm sure you're going to have to rewind and, and review many stages of the process. I've shot it from different angles, some of it, so you can see what it looks like from the front and from my view. And I hope that helps. Uh, in the end, I decided to do a voiceover. Um, again, I hope it helps. You can mute it if it doesn't. <laughs> um, yeah, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the video, please support it. Either look at my website and buy something or give a donation to say thank you for the video. It doesn't have to be big. Um, in fact, that's the reason why I've done this. It can reach a lot more people and I don't have to ask for anything. Hopefully people will give something just to say thank you. And if not, good luck anyway. Okay. Thank you.